In this video, we're going to take a deep dive into the bare paint color called white metal. The color code is N520-1, and now that we got the code, it's time to crack it. By the end of this video, you're not only going to know all the important information about white metal, the color, you also will have a handful of other paint colors that go with it, which can hopefully inspire you as you put together your own personal color palette. So let's get right into it. One of the very first things that I look at when I'm analyzing a paint color is I make sure to find out the LRV. For those of you that are new to the channel or to paint colors in general, the LRV is the light reflectance value of a paint color. It sounds weird, but it's really really not. All that it is, is a percentage from 0 to 100, which represents the amount of light that any particular color reflects. And if we go onto the Bayer website, we can actually see the LRV right here. It's 63. And this makes it a bit lighter than your standard middle of the road midtones, which usually live around 50 or so. As a paint color, White metal can be classified as a pretty neutral gray, all things considered. And if we go back onto the website, we can actually see that its balance of RGB, or red, green, and blue, is pretty similar across the board. The only one that's a bit different is the blue value, which is just a bit less. And believe it or not, that actually makes an impact as to how this color looks. Even though this is nearly as gray as you can get undertones wise, the fact that there's less blue means that the red undertone ends up being slightly more prominent. And this can give the color the most subtle of purple undertones in the right lighting conditions. Now, I don't normally recommend referring to RGB values when determining how a color will look. It just so happens that in this case, it actually does work out. Overall, it feels pretty light as a color. In fact, colors that live around that low 60s LRV range end up being pretty easy to use. They just sit in a nice sweet spot of depth. 63 isn't dark enough to make whatever space you use it in feel like a spooky haunted castle. <laughs> That's just too dark. Where it's also not too light, where it'll just feel like your walls are plain boring white. If the goal for you is to find a color that's a light, right down the middle gray, white metal does a pretty good job at accomplishing that. The one thing that I have noticed, however, is when grays are really neutral, they tend to lean cooler in practical use. And that's mainly due to how sunlight can impact and cool colors down the same exact way that your cooler LED light bulbs might impact your color as well. Even if you have the odd incandescent bulb here and there, it's still probably not going to compensate for the other surrounding cool lighting that most of us have. Why don't we talk about some paint colors that I've chosen to go along Alongside white metal. Let's go through some colors ranging from off-white to dark colors. And I want to start with a light color pairing that may not seem like an obvious choice, but I think it works pretty well. The color is called Papier Blanc, and it's a color that's much lighter with an 83 LRV, making it pretty much an off-white. It's great because it introduces some much-needed warmth to complement white metal, but visibly it feels more creamy rather than yellow, and will just add a literal lightness to surround the slightly darker white metal color. Both colors could be classified as feeling neutral because you do have ultimately a gray and a very light beige, but because they're on opposite ends of that neutral spectrum, you could say, they will work in tandem, but do different things. If you're thinking about using this color on your trim, just wait till the end of the video because I do have an even better option for that purpose. Continuing on with our mid-tone color choice, I wanted to steer away from gray and beige, but I was a little apprehensive about picking something overly vibrant, which could pull too much focus away from the other colors. I think I accomplished that with Hydrangea Bouquet, which is a beautiful dusty mauve that combines red, gray, and maybe a little bit of brown. Remember how I mentioned that white metal can sometimes show the slightest hint of purple? Well, that's why I wanted to go with something that has a bit of that purple aspect as well, but on a much more apparent scale. This color is definitely more rosy than purple, but they're within the same sort of family, so you could call them adjacent to one another. The next color is a direct complement to Hydrangea Bouquet, and it is in our dark color pairing. The color is called Heritage Park, and it is an awesome shade of green that is saturated, but at the same time grounded. It's not necessarily warm or cool feeling, although it does have that evergreen type of feel that I really enjoy. The same way Hydrangea Bouquet was bright, but not overly vibrant, neither is this color. 
They're definitely more saturated and colorful than the first two colors, but everything just sort of works cohesively. All that's left is a suitable off-white paint color, which I always find is useful to have at your disposal, especially if you wanna pick something for your trim, more specifically, some nice white baseboards, for example. For that use case, I would go with a bit of sugar, which is nice and soft, but still clean. It has an 89 LRV, which is quite a bit higher than any other color we've talked about, but it just has that sparkling quality that really ties everything together. Check out this paint color by Bear Paint for something a little bit different. I have another set of color pairings for it as well, which I think you might enjoy. 